Greetings everyone. We are very honored to have our second career conversation series, which is a global initiative uh, providing the youth with diverse career perspectives of various futuristic careers as well as traditional careers. So we are very honored to have an esteemed guest uh, this afternoon, Professor Dr. Jamil Kazmi. I would like to um, uh, request him to please share a brief overview of his educational background. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamualaikum viewers. Uh, this would really have been a pleasure for me that I always uh, discuss uh, with uh, Raza Abbas sahab uh, the future of the uh, young generation and I think uh, one of the very a uh, great career is now available with GIS with the Geographic Information System. I have been in touch with the Geographic Information System for the last 30 years. Uh, my education, PhD in Geography, and then I've done my postdoc, two postdocs, one from Germany and one from United States of America in Geographical Information System and Ecology. I think uh, uh, although conventionally Geography is a very important field uh, in 20th and 21st century, but now geography is especially uh, focused on uh, geographical information system which is a paradigm shift in geography itself and uh, based on that now it's a multidisciplinary field that's not only geography but many other sciences like computer sciences like physics uh, like astrophysics like astronomy like engineering and planning and medicine everything is included now uh, more or less in geographical information system Thank you, Dr. Kazmi. For those students that are planning to enter this field after they complete their high school and their A-levels, what types of skills should they possess? Uh, I think uh, for best thing uh, at the level of uh, uh, intermediate is that they should uh, carry on with the engineering discipline, but th there are many students in my department as well. They, they were not uh, uh, engineering side students, but they have done really outstanding job. So you can come in in GIS career uh, mainly with the engineering background that is pre-engineering, but you can also come with pre-medical and even from arts and commerce in GIS. So we have allocated seats in geography department, like for example, not only from uh, pre-engineering, pre-medical, commerce, arts, and also at GIS master's level, we are accepting uh, many uh, students of science uh, and uh, social sciences and engineering. So it's, it's been accept, uh, accepted everywhere in Pakistan and many parts of the globe as well. Okay, so which, which do they need to be uh, uh, proficient in a, in a certain subject in their high school, or they can uh, just ha they can apply from any backgrounds as, as far as? I think as uh, uh, f to begin with, uh, they, they 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 have must have some uh, mathematics background, and uh, number two, that they should be or must be computer literate, mm -hmm. and uh, they have some exposure of the really uh, layman tool like for example Google Earth and uh, Google Mapper or something like that. But so they can develop really very good insight in GIS if they have these backgrounds. But if they don't have, uh, they can develop these uh, skills and then they can go far ahead in the field of GIS. I have many examples, really very good examples. Okay, wonderful. Uh, as, as you shared that GIS is a, is a futuristic field, not just in Pakistan but globally, what, which subsectors are growing in this field? Can you share with the audience? So uh, I think uh, geographical information system uh, around the globe is uh, penetrating in each and every type of field, but mainly in engineering, uh, in utilities, in service sector, in banking, uh, in sports industry, in environment and ecology. So there are many applications of you should, like for example, if you would like to become an engineer, you would like to carry on with the career of GIS, then you can carry on really in the field of uh, surveying and photogrammetry. So that's, that's the beauty of GIS that if you have any interest of social sciences, of natural sciences, of engineering, of medicine, you can come like for example, a lot of uh, mapping and uh, incidence mapping of COVID-19 is going through with the help of GIS and it's a really very important tool uh, to understand COVID-19 around the globe, especially the dispersion of the disease. So in medical sciences, uh, GIS is a very, very powerful tool being used by WHO, United Nations, and many governments. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned about COVID-19. Um, once you graduate with uh, a degree in GIS, uh, what types of uh, job opportunities are available? And for those that want to go as in, into the job creation and to be an entrepreneur, can you share some insights on that as well? Uh, I can divide uh, the job application uh, uh, mainly into international sector, national sector, and private sector. So in international sector, I've already mentioned 
about uh, United Nations, WHO, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, IMF, everywhere we have GIA section. And in Pakistan, if you divide, like for example, in government sector, like for example, in government of Sindh, 10% allocated quota is uh, in every field, especially in planning, in, in Ministry of Education, Ministry of Climate Change, uh, the, the, the allocated sector is about 10%. So without uh, GIS, you cannot uh, make any kind of district management. So it's, the job opportunities in government sectors are really very much. And if you see, like, for example, private companies or the uh, semi-private companies, like, for example, all the utilities companies, SSGC, uh, WAPTA, K Electric, uh, like, for example, PTCL, uh, CDGK, everywhere we have GIS section. So the, the, the many opportunities, depending on the student uh, who is actually graduated and his or her insight in the subject, he can really sell herself or himself really quite effectively if they have good background of GIS. And third sector is private sectors. Many engineering consultant firms, uh, uh, serving firms and environmental firms, EIA firms are taking GIS graduates. And there is a really great deal of opportunities in all of these private sector as well. Okay. Uh, like entrepreneurship, uh, uh, you know, international certification, like for example, ESRI, uh, Environmental System Research Incorporation, which is actually uh, capturing the more than 80% of GIS market. Uh, if you have uh, GIS certification from those agencies, like for example, uh, URISA, uh, URISA America, or ESRI, or IGU, International Geographical Union, then you can, you can sell yourself really quite effectively, not in Pakistan, but Middle East, in America, in North America, and in many places. And uh, there are many uh, courses of ESRI available free of cost. So you can enroll yourself. These re re courses really are quite well. Uh, these are two months course, and uh, readily now approximately five courses are free of cost available. So uh, these courses are only for beginners. So if you would like, for example, you, ex uh, you would like to become a good entrepreneur, so uh, there is one opportunity, in, like for example, uh, a course which is called the Location Advantage in Business. That's freely available on ESRI training uh, website. You can go there and you can develop really a very good insight about the entrepreneurship, especially in GIS. Okay. Um, it's wonderful to see that this field has so many opportunities that, th that the average people are not aware of. So I think this this interview is, will provide a lot of valuable insights to the young youth that not only the, um, the employment opportunities are available, but those that want to have entrepreneurship, that uh, opportunities are available as well. And last but not the least, what valuable advice will you like to share to students entering this field? I think uh, the most valuable advice, not only for GIS, but for every field, if you have int interest and if you have the aptitude in the field, that's a really a bottom line. So if you would like to excel in GIS, try to establish uh, yourself through studies and training and skills in the field. Uh, every, uh, you know, knowledge or, or, you know, science is not regarding uh, the job opportunities. It is to build yourself. If you build yourself, the jobs uh, automatically comes to you and there's no problem in the future. So try to build yourself, try to strengthen yourself getting knowledge and uh, develop your uh, uh, interpretation about the science and that is the thing which is really the, the crux of uh, this uh, communication that try to develop and evolve knowledge and how to use different analysis through knowledge that's really very important because most of the sciences and uh, social sciences subjects in humanities and arts we are only focusing to memorize these things just for the examination purposes. And it's just, it's just being washed away after the examination. So it's better not to focus only examination, but beyond that. So if you, like for example, learn some technology skill, and then you develop yourself, examinations no matter. You can develop very good grades uh, in, in the examination, and you can excel yourself as well on the top horizon of every field. That's very, very inspirational words. Yeah. I think it's very important whenever we are entering any field, focus more on the experimental learning, on the holistic learning, as compared to just focusing on grades. Yes, so with that note, with those words of inspiration, I would like to thank um, the, the listeners for listening to this wonderful uh, session on GIS. 
geographical information systems and if you have any questions and further insights you want to know more about your careers, I will be happy to do a one to one session. Till next time um, take care of yourself and stay safe, thank you.